Jonathan, your Middle England has been translated into Italian and it came out in November last year. Mm -hmm. uh, it is having great success. What's your relationship with Italian readership? Uh, you know, for a long time it never occurred to me that I would have uh, a readership outside my own country because I always thought of my books as very British or very English even. But it's nearly a quarter of a century now since uh, I've been coming to Italy with my books. The first one to have a real success was La Familia Winshaw, which was not my first novel, but it was my first novel to, uh, to reach a European readership. Uh, and I think I've just come to understand over the last uh, 25 years that the things that I write about, although on the surface uh, they seem to be English preoccupations set in English locations with English characters, I'm writing about uh, struggles to do with, with family, with friendship, with career, with relationships, and of course with politics which are common all over Europe. And uh, although Middle England seems to be a particularly English book with its theme of, uh, of Brexit, uh, really I think the, the underlying themes of this book are ones which all Italian readers will recognize. And I'm writing about political concerns and divisions which are being felt in every European country at the moment. Some, some of the characters in Middle England and also in the other two books in the trilogy um, have relationship with Italian, with Italy and, or Italian characters. Mm -hmm. um, is there any reason for that choice? Um, only that I wanted to, uh, I've always wanted to show in my books uh, that uh, Britain is a European country. Often we don't seem to think of ourselves that way or talk about ourselves in that way. But uh, a lot of the characters in my books, not just in, uh, not just in Middle England and the Close Circle and the Rotters Club, uh, have networks of friendship and family which spread out throughout Europe. And uh, yeah, it, it's, it's part of my sense of belonging to a European family of writers, which is something I've always felt very strongly ever since, uh, you know, I was just, I was a student myself, specializing in 18th century English literature, uh, specializing in the novels of Henry Fielding, who's, all of whose work can be traced uh, directly back to Cervantes and Don Quixote. So, uh, you know, what we think of as the most English of novels are actually uh, European in origin. Mm, so it's, it's a large European network yes. working. Yeah. Um, talking of that, uh, talking of students, uh, is there any suggestions or any advice you would give uh, to uh, Italian students or to Venetian students as far as literature is concerned, English literature is concerned? Um, my suggestion that they would be that they uh, understand contemporary England by reading uh, as widely in British contemporary fiction as possible. Uh, not just uh, the famous established names, but uh, writers from all sorts of uh, different ethnic backgrounds and so on who are becoming more and more uh, visible and whose voices are becoming more and more heard in the UK. Uh, because Britain is a, is a diverse multicultural society now and that has to be reflected in the way that we uh, read our literature. And is there any suggestion you would give to British students as far as experience in Italy, for instance, is concerned? Uh, in terms of... Uh, would, you, would you tell them go to Italy and um, for your knowledge, not just for your holidays? <laughs> Absolutely, because, uh, you know, there are fascinating and important differences between uh, British and Italian society and British and Italian uh, politics in particular. Um, you know, Britain has always had a great reputation as being uh, a pragmatic country politically, a, a mature country politically, and uh, we've sort of 
Uh, we've lost sight of that a little bit in the last, in the last couple of years. Britain has uh, degenerated into uh, uh, the kind of political instability that we're, that we're not used to. And I think our politics needs to become, uh, we need to learn more from the way uh, things are run uh, in other European countries. We need to expand our horizons and we need to forget this British exceptionalism which makes us believe that our country is the, is the best and the best run. So come to Italy, come to France, come to other European countries and see how they do it. They do things differently to us, but often they do things better. Mm. So are you in favour of the Erasmus exchange, for instance? Yeah, it would be a great tragedy, I think, if one of the consequences of Brexit is that the Erasmus programme uh, suffers. My daughter is currently an Erasmus student. She's had a term in uh, Bergen in Norway and now a term in, uh, in Granada in Spain. And it's been uh, an extraordinary experience for her. And I think it's, uh, you know, it, it, it has been one of the most enriching experiences for young people in recent years. And I would, I would certainly uh, urge people to make use of it, to travel as widely as possible and study as widely as possible throughout Europe. Thank you very much indeed.